Man, oh man. All right. So, it's like, be careful what you agree to. Uh, my, my sweet neighbor, she needed some help at her house, and so I went over there to help. She asked me to, to cut the lawn. Sure, I'm glad to. And I mean, it's a small lot. Ah, that's some good thunder. But I just finished up. So it's a small lot in a half an acre, maybe. I'm not really good with you know, estimating acreage. But anyway, so I'm over there, cut the grass. She wants me to trim the hedges. And, and I want to do a good job. So she has grass growing up all the way through her driveway. I spend a lot of time getting that down and And with the with the weed eater and that and that worked a little bit but it's been a, a lot of time doing that and then I edged it cut the hedges then she had a ton of forest growing up and the, just forest growing up in the back and just all these vines and everything so I cut those back I use her lawnmower to, to cut the lawn. This is a little super, super low lawnmower, like with no height adjustment. Um, <laughs> it just... The lawn just, it took forever. It was big old thick lawn. And I guess she had people cutting it. It's been three weeks to a month or something. spent five hours over there just cutting grass and just helping her out and so I thought maybe it'd take an hour a couple of hours but it took a long time like right through the heat of the day I'm tired I, have, I want a nap or something Whew. So I don't know what the real lesson here is. You know, like when you're willing and available for God to use you and somebody comes to you and asks you for help. I mean, sure, I'm glad to help. It's just, you know, just five hours and she asked me if I can do it in a few weeks. I'm like, she's like, can you keep doing this? I'm like, sure. <laughs> just. I don't really want to. That took so much time. And I have stuff to do, you know, but I mean, is that the lesson? Like, don't let stuff get in the way of helping people? Maybe. Just enjoy where you are in the moment. Like, it's good to get a good sweat in. <laughs> I, don't know, I just just laughing at it, man. It's a challenge, right? Just a, a little bit of a challenge. Oh man. I 
had stuff to do today, but I just don't want to do any of it now. <laughs> yeah. glad it's thundering and maybe about to rain. I am. Um, the stuff I was going to do is going to be outside. No rain yet. Oh man. I feel a little burnt. And, oh man. I just want to go like jump in a pool. Good to be tired. It's good to be worn out. What else I was thinking about with these plans and projects that I I have coming up? That you know, it's good to have a goal. Like I I really need to set goals, not big goals, but. Like incremental goals. Like even throughout the day. Like, okay, do five of these things or do this until you get this result. Just like small things. Like if I go without a goal, I'll keep going and going and going, get a success, just ignore it, keep going, get another success, ignore it, okay, well, just three more, then I get those three more, like, okay, well, I can do another three. I need to plan in. I've always had a hard time setting goals. And I get like mental block when I start like setting a goal, but it's really just programming in a stop point. Okay, you do this. That's good enough for one day. Go ahead and stop. Call it a day. Takes you all day to do it. Fine, but. If the day ends before you achieve that number, then that's fine. The day stops. The day's over, but... If you hit that number... <coughs> doves in the backyard. They keep getting scared. But if the day's over, fine. I try it again tomorrow. But if I hit that number, go ahead and stop. Celebrate it. Celebrating achievements. It's always been a weakness of mine. But I just haven't done it. I haven't.
It's like, and everything is good enough. That's why the goal of the stop point is so important. Man, like grass or pollen in my nose. My eyes and everyone's filthy. <sighs> I need the stop point and I need to celebrate my victory, celebrate my successes. I guess I finished cutting that yard. All right. Uh, get some excitement going. I finished it. Tan line, I think, in my ankle. Okay, well, maybe you can't really see it there, but. Might be a dirt line instead. Things from all the weed eating and stuff blowing up at me. Mm. All right, I'm gonna do something. First, I'm checking the weather because I see a bunch of blue sky out there. Then, I don't know. I need to edit, learn more about this editing thing. I am on, I think I'm on one week making videos. And I haven't edited them. I've only like test edited one thing. I need to learn how to edit on that phone. Pretty cool to edit on the fly. Edit on the phone on the go. Yeah, I could be anywhere. pretty much be anywhere anyway because it's a laptop and it's portable <laughs> even less things to carry it's weird you know like with my laptop I'm concerned with carrying it because I'm afraid I'm going to drop it and damage it and break it but my phone I guess I feel like it's more rugged it's in a case I've dropped it a thousand and a half times so I kind of know it's Somewhat durable. Ugh. But yeah, so I think my laptop is more fragile, so I, I don't carry it. I like, protect it. Anyway, I'm glad I could help that lady. I think more people should help their neighbor. I mean, just, 
offering to cut their grass for free. Cutting your grass. Especially everybody, everybody that's like riding a over these days. It's crazy town that some of these people have a half acre lot. Maybe, maybe they have one acre. Maybe they have one acre lot, but they probably have a half acre house on that lot. Like they have a house then they have a garage and they have this huge concrete paddock. Is that what it's called? Just like turnarounds and their trailers and stuff. They, they just, those people, they just keep adding on to their house. And they're getting work done right now in their house. Um, But they have like so little grass to cut. And they have like a full on zero turn, whatever mower. And, and they pay somebody to cut their grass. Anyway, the point is, sounds like I'm getting critical there, doesn't it? Um, the point there is, it doesn't cost you anything really. Couple bucks in gas, maybe? Especially with the zero turn and it's a, a half acre lawn next to you. Why not cut their grass? Especially if it's an old person or really, for realsies, like single moms. Man, I have such a heart for single moms and it's unfortunate now that my wife chose to be a single mom three kids man one with special needs man she so put herself in a hard situation at least she's at her parents and she has their help um So, so bad for her, you know? She's just... She's just so broken. She's, just, she's been so broken for so long, she thinks it's normal. Like, anyone trying to do... <laughs> she hated me doing good for other people. It's like, anyone doing good for somebody else, well, that's just just wrong that didn't fit into her legalistic doctrine I'm like man girl you gotta <sighs> just unwilling to accept anybody else's point of view or understanding of what Jesus teaches and that didn't fit with her staunch whatever doctrines and she just she's everything so negative I wish she would I wish she would get some help but so like my heart for single moms just thinking about Single moms, so many of them, they're just in working poverty. You know, like as many as 90% of kids raised in America experience poverty at some level. Because 40% are born without dads, born to single moms. Such a high percentage of those like never get married, never get a stable dad. And then 50% of marriages end, and usually that is, yeah, that's before like. 35 when so many marriages in and it's like maybe before 40 when so many marriages end and you know I didn't have my first son until I was 30 so the kids are super young and these moms are just in such a bad spot they're just they're in functional poverty. Like, if they work, 
they're just working for daycare for their kids. And like a lot of times these moms, they're just working you know, like waitress jobs or they're a, a cash cashier, you know, or receptionist or something. Especially these moms with like real young kids. And like daycare costs like 250 bucks a week. And these moms like if they're making 15 bucks an hour, which is highly unlikely, especially in Georgia for you know, a waitress at a Cracker Barrel or Waffle House or you know, a cashier at the grocery store or something. Like, I, I doubt they're making $15 an hour. But if they're making $15 an hour and they're working full time, 40 hours a week, they're only making 600 bucks a week. It's like, can't do anything with 600 bucks. So like, that's high enough where, man, it's like $24,000 a year. So like 20% is being taken out in taxes. So there goes 150 bucks, 120 bucks. Yeah. So 120 bucks goes to taxes. It's like each week. And then with health insurance, well, that's mandatory and it's super expensive. Let's call that 100 bucks a week because it's a minimum of 400 bucks a month. So there's 220. And then they have to pay childcare. That's 250 bucks a month, like on average. Depending on where they're working, you know, maybe they have to pay like extra for like extra care or they're taking their kids to like the, to the city or something where, you know, it's like 400 bucks a week. Let's say 250, there goes $470 of their weekly pay and they still have to pay for a car, a house, food, clothes, any medications. Their utilities, internet, cell phones. That's like eight high dollar expenses. That she has like less than 200 bucks to pay for. It's not possible. It's just not possible. So that's one reason credit card debt is through the roof. Because well, these moms, they're making ends meet by putting it on their credit card. So I've been around way too many single moms that they are busting their tail. I mean, single moms, they are the hardest working people. <laughs> I know, like females in general are harder workers than males but especially you throw a kid in the mix like they bust their tail cause man they're trying to take care of that kid oh. and then they're driving everywhere And if they want to have a social life, if they want to date, well, they have no time, they have no money, and then they, they need to get a sitter for the kid. Whatever babysitters are charging now, like 20 bucks an hour or something. For some people say like 40 bucks an hour. I'm like, wow. Paying somebody 40 bucks an hour to sit on your couch and eat your food and text their boyfriend, you know, while your kid watches TV. Sorry, that's not a... Maybe it's not a fair assessment of babysitters. I had some really great babysitters when I was a kid.
So anyway, these single moms are just struggling, man. And my sister was a single mom for a little bit. Like all the girls I used to work with were single moms or they were trying to work it out, but their husbands were all strung out on some kind of drug. And then when that meth gets a hold of these guys, they just, it's just trouble. So these girls, they're just raising the kids by themselves and the dads, they, they're no help. They don't want anything to do with the kids or they're not helping out. And they're not not giving money for child support. And these moms are just trying to figure out a way to make it. Thank God a lot of them can get roommates or live with their their family, but a lot of the girls I knew like other than my sister like they didn't have parents they could rely on like their parents were relying on them because I mean, a lot of them were all strung out like the parents were strung out and they were relying on the kids or another one the mother just got older and she like had heart issues and had a stroke and, like couldn't see anymore so she had to move in and with the single mom, because she needed help. There are other ones, like, the mom just, that's another one, the mom was like a drug addict and like a con artist and like a gypsy, you know, just kind of traveled around and super smart and got great jobs everywhere. But just... But just wasn't dependable for her daughter. I don't know, these drugs, man, get a hold of people. But they're like the underlying poverty people. Like they have jobs and they make more than twenty thousand a year, so they're not considered in poverty by government standards, but all their money is spent by the time they got it for just basic, basic necessities and I mean they are they're in working poverty. And these kids grow up and they're just damaged and broken. There's one I know. His mom, single mom, she wasn't super great and attentive. And I don't know if she like just kind of ditched him from time to time. And he was like taking out his anger on like on like pets. Like he was like killing his hamsters and stuff. It's like all these kids, they're just growing up without dads, growing up with moms that are struggling and they just they just internalize it and they'll think they're not worthless like well if I was worth anything then my dad would have stuck around and these poor kids you know we showed something that we could we could do Helping these kiddos out, helping the moms out, helping the kids know that they're loved, helping the moms know that they're not alone. It's 
what are we going to do? What can we do? Love some ideas. I am associated, have been associated with a group that you know, did food pantry. That was cool. They're like block parties at churches. They go to churches with inflatables so the kids could play and cook hot dogs and stuff. And that was, that was neat. I don't think the block parties are happening anymore. Even like before COVID, I think they were pretty much stopped. Like all these, all these kids from like just single moms, single, being raised by single moms. It's like suicide rates are so high. Like the suicide rate, of kids, ten years old, you know, all the way up to thirty-five. But all the kids in there, like suicide is a number two killer. Like absurd. It's it's reaching back to their childhood, I think. And they didn't have dads there to love on them, to tell them that they're worthless, especially the boys. It's like the boys need their dad there to tell them that they're men. You know, tell them that they're doing a good job. Tell them that. The person that you're going to grow up to be, the person who's most like who you are going to be when you grow up, he's a good guy. He's a good example. He's loving and he yeah, loves your mom, takes care of, takes care of your family. The kids don't have that. They, they're lost. You know, they... They don't know how to behave when they grow up. And then especially like in their teenage years, you're going through all these hormones and thinking and questioning. So much just like self-loathing. Self-loathing. Our job is show people that they're not alone. These kids or the moms. Or the old neighbors, little old ladies that need help cutting the grass. God, help us help people. Help us help people. Uh, united under God, what are we going to do with that sight? With that? It has so much potential. Um, I get all, I guess, afraid. You know, I guess it's just afraid and get all afraid of do anything in in that site just like it doesn't live up to the potential it's not good enough for what this site is or could be or should be which is dumb because now it's just kind of nothing it's just a few words up there at least it was attractive before but i took the pictures down and Just kind of trying to go with my gut, just what I thought. And just get it up there, and like usual, it just didn't work. You gotta find another system, another way to get content up there. 
Oh, yeah. But how can this, like, our entire church community? serve our community serve the people in need show Jesus love just through service through either painting their garage or cutting their grass whatever Ugh. just kind of have like a work day have a serve day It's like congregations are falling up, or like denominations, like Southern Baptist Convention is like falling apart, and churches and denominations are dissolving. Like just real people need to get out and serve. It's not. You know, the institution of the church's job to serve people in our community is ours personally. Personal church. You know, we are the temple of God. We are we are to show the love of God individually to yeah, to the individuals that we're around. We need to do more of that. Serving people that way around. Hmm. How can I help more people understand that that's a need? How can, how can I motivate more people to get out and just serve their neighbor? Just simple little acts of kindness. <laughs> simple, simple little acts of kindness. Not kindless. We already have plenty of that. It's like the wave when you pass. Hey. Kind of do that silent. You know, like your windows are down and you're driving past your neighbor walking and you just don't even muster the volume of your voice to say hello. You just kind of. We have so much kindness. <laughs> we are so kindless. We need to show kindness to people around us. Yeah, there's some organizations that do a few things here and there, but there are not enough organizations to meet the need of all the people that are around or they don't know the people that are really in need because the same people have been in need just for years and years maybe the individual ain't in need anymore but that's that group still is and we think about the elderly but we just ignore the single mom or the working poor could be a, a whole you know complete nuclear family but Especially if the, the wife is home taking care of the kids. They probably have more money than the single mom. That their kid has to go to daycare, but they're still 
We're still struggling. We're still working poor, working poverty. Oh, let's look for opportunities to help them, to help all people in need. It's like excitedly look for opportunity to share love. Seems to me like that could just make the hugest difference and super, super fast. thinking about my wife and ex-wife. Trying to figure out why she decided to become a single mom. I can't change it. I can't alleviate her pain, her anguish. I gave her pretty much all the money I have. And <laughs> Focus my thoughts on God's goodness. I'm excited to see what God does in her life, in my life, in my kids' life. I think dads, like whenever you're not with your kids, it's like so important to call them every day, even if it's just to tell them, I love you. Like, I think your kids need to know and they need to be reminded. No, whenever I was married, it was like, well, in a healthy marriage, you tell each other you love each other. Like every time you leave, like every morning when you leave work, and at night when you go to bed, or Whenever you get home, whenever you talk on the phone and hang out, it's, it's a frequent thing, you know? It's not just like two times a month, like whenever you see your kids. But it's every day. Your kids need it. Sometimes they think they get tired of it or they act all big and they're 10 years old and they're so grown now. But they still need to know. I love hearing it from my dad, you know, 41 years old. But yeah, just because you don't see your kids and you can't hug them every day, they can still know that you love them. They need to know that you still love them. And I was talking with a, a buddy that we used to have this men's group. That was no, like that men's group. Like you were free to tell another man that you love him. You're know, like, brother, I love you, man. And it's like, 
the first few times you say it, it feels like it's breaking something inside, but it's, it's really like, when like you break a bone and it healed wrong, like you have to break it again to get it to line up right. Like that's how it's, how it was. It was like painful, but beautiful. And you needed to hear and to say that you loved another man, that, <laughs> that there can be that bond, that brotherhood. Where you just, you're there for one another. Man, men need a group. And that men's group, that Bible study, that was solid, man. It was so... Like the guy I was talking to this weekend, it was like, man, we need to get that going again. We need to start that up. We really need that men's group. And they were struggling or suffering. Man. You need to have a group of guys there that, that that have your back that you can lean on when you're weak. You need a, a team that will hold you up. That men's group is so special. Like, after I experienced it for a little bit, I just I realized every man needs that. It doesn't matter if you had a great childhood or your father was missing. It doesn't matter if it was his own choice not to be there or it was your mom's choice. Like, 80% of marriages end because the woman leaves. You know, it's not because of abuse or infidelity. It's because they're unwilling to talk to each other and resolve conflict. Just, people don't know how to do that anymore. People are unwilling to try. It's too scary. It's difficult. People would rather just give up and quit. Pay an attorney to handle all that. But whatever the reason was that your dad's not there, like, men need men to strengthen one another up. And boys need men. They need somebody that's honorable, that has integrity, that is knowledgeable about manhood to kind of guide them along the way. Yeah, like teaching them how to use tools, teaching them how to respect a woman, teaching them how to behave on a date, teaching them that sex is not the most important thing. You need that connection, that soul connection. It's not just all about you know, material stuff, about getting that big car, getting that big house, conquering as many women as you can. That's such a sham of manhood. I was going down that path for a while. Like, when I was young, like in my 20s, I was, I was stupid. I had a dad at home. So 
Somehow I forgot. The lessons of manhood. Yeah, maybe it's, you know, this has to be intentionally taught. So many of our dads, yeah, maybe your, your parents are still together, but your dad's just not there because he's a workaholic. He's just, he's never there. He's, he's trying to provide for the family the best way he knows how, but he's just, in a way, he's just hiding behind his work. He's hiding at work. He's hiding from fatherhood responsibility. Maybe he's not doing it intentionally, but he's neglecting his role as teaching his kids the way they should grow. You know, teaching the kids how to be adults. You know, it's, you know, I mean, our fathers are messed up. They're messed up because of their fathers coming back from you know, World War One or two or whatever it is. They on drugs or porn or whatever it is. Just, and Satan's after our young people, especially our, our males, especially our, our firstborn males. Like the Bible you know, says those firstborn males, that they're just like set aside to serve God, but instead, like firstborn firstborn males, we're just dumb and just chasing girls and think status and power and you know the ultimate signs of success and we want people to recognize we're successful so we chase after those worthless things kind of like without a a guide we're just blind being led by the blind, like TV and television or whatever. I guess overall point is nearly every demographic in America is in need, is in pain somehow, and needs help, needs Jesus. You know, self-help genre is just like the fastest growing segment of books and podcasts and YouTube videos and people dealing with depression and and what we're doing is not working. It's not, 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 not working. But what people need is Jesus, the love, the acceptance, knowing that they're worthy. Just because they're alive, you know? They're worthy. Worthy because they were made worthy. They're made for a purpose, intentional. Like their life is intentional, it's not an accident. It's intentional. How do we get people to, to realize that and to accept it? It's a long, long, time frame where these just bad thoughts we just put in our mind the devil's been lying to us and tricking us for so long man we don't even know why we're broken Just people's experience goes to show that brokenness is the most common I don't know, 
self-diagnosis, most common state of people. It's the devil's after us. The devil's after people. The devil's after Christians. The devil's after the church. The devil's here to shut Jesus down. And we have to stand up for the truth and act out the truth. Not just say and preach, but live and act and do. God, so what do you need me to do? What do we do? Hmm. Could have got to sleep right there. Never go to sleep praying. No. The prayer sleep. It's not a bad thing. It's better to fall asleep praying than fall asleep thinking about something gnarly, you know? for an hour time flies when you're having fun I'll talk to y'all later hope you have a great day